My name is Willie Jackson. Today is January 18th, 2017, and I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. One of the challenges with homogenous cultures is that it, by definition, pushes marginalized people into the margins. And so my definition of transformative culture would be a culture that is responsive to the needs of the folks who comprise that culture. So sometimes that will be uncomfortable, sometimes that will be a learning experience for everyone involved, but by definition it will always change. Willie Jackson is a 32-year-old media executive. He is a multi-talented uh, speaker and poet and author and magazine publisher. He's so excited to be here. He's so excited to be black. Yeah, Ebenethy is the magazine I founded uh, two years ago, almost exactly. Um, in the wake of Mike Brown's death in Ferguson, Missouri, I found myself um, adrift. Uh, I grew up comfortably in the suburbs of Jacksonville, Florida. And one of the challenges with my upbringing is that it protected me from a lot of realities that black and brown folks face in America. And so, um, in answering a lot of questions that I had about what this black experience was actually all about, um, why some things were still affecting our communities, um, why our neighborhoods look the way they do, why I was feeling the way that I felt, why I felt so vulnerable in my flesh um, suddenly for the first time, um, I had a lot of learning to do. And so Abernathy Magazine is my expression of um, learning uh, out loud in public with everybody else. So it's an online magazine. We publish long form content from a black male's perspective. And our mission is to celebrate the good news. So you turn on the news, you consume any kind of mass media. What do you see? You see athletes, entertainers, and criminals. We're a lot more than that. My friends are a lot more than that. Your friends are a lot more than that. And so I wanted to create a space where we could tell our own stories on our own terms and be proud of that. The uncomfortable truth is that America was built upon slavery, genocide, and oppression. And um, the repercussions of this legacy still haunt us today when we look at native populations, when we look at indigenous, po indigenous populations, when we look at black communities. And I think the thing that must be done, regardless of whether or not I ever take the oath of office, is um, we have to have our policies uh, reflecting the most vulnerable folks in America. We have to have our policies reflect the needs of, um, you know, folks who've had a long and hard journey to just trying to make it. And one of the challenges we're seeing in America right now is that we punish the nation's most vulnerable for being poor, um, for being um, unlearned in some ways, and for being dropped into the system of oppression that we never asked for. And so I would seek to um, turn things on its head because a lot of oppressed and marginalized folks have so much to offer. And uh, we know a lot about persevering, we know a lot about overcoming, and no one is asking us these questions. And when we strip away these notions of success and capitalism and uh, just being in this rat race that we find ourselves lost in in, in Western culture, um, what's really needed is more connection, uh, more empathy, more compassion, and more humanity. And so when you look at a historically marginalized and traumatized uh, population like black folks in the United States, um, there's a lot that we can offer uh, the world, not just America, in terms of how to cope and how to deal, how to survive and how to think. And so I would, I would really seek to turn things upside down. You know, the older I get, the more I look to my parents as heroes. And it sounds cliche, but um, I'm the grandson of sharecroppers. Um, my father was born, to, born in 1944, and he picked cotton in the segregated South. Um, I have no idea what life might have been like for him. Um, he tells a story about how when he used to go get uh, chewing tobacco for my grandfather, who was um, deceased, he used to have to ask for Mr. Prince Albert in a can. Prince Albert in a can was the name of the product. And I just can't imagine um, the effect that it might have on your psychology as a grown man to have to ask for um, a product in that way. So uh, I, I look to my father increasingly as someone from whom I draw uh, inspiration in just seeing uh, the grace with which he has navigated life. Um, he turned 73 uh, on the 8th of January. And, uh, He's going to be with us for a while, so I'd say my father. Um, I'm inspired by the unsung heroes in our communities, um, the people we don't see on the news, um, the mothers and the grandmothers who have held our communities together for decades uh, and for centuries. 
um, the people we don't know, the names we will never remember. Um, I recognize that I hold a lot of privilege in being able to be in some of the rooms that I'm in and have some of the meetings that I have and do some of the things that I do out loud. You know, we live in this social media generated generation. Um, we're so completely connected. Um, my education has given me a lot of opportunities, but there are a lot of people on whose shoulders I stand and I'm inspired by all the people uh, whose names I don't know. I am really uninformed about this Kanye 2020 business. Um, what I will say about the brilliant Mr. West is that um, he's a brilliant mind and we all have our demons and I would hate for the worst of what I felt inside my head and inside my heart to be on stage for all the world to judge. And so I have a great deal of respect for Mr. West and I, I really do hope that he gets um, the help and the peace that um, he needs. I'm not sure we have to look to media figures for any sort of moral compass. Um, I think it's important to understand the systems at work um, that result in questions like that because there's nothing about an entertainer's life that affects my day-to-day -day lived experiences, um, but there are a lot of things that we have in common. Um, but when you understand how the music industry works and how it's funded and the images that are perpetuated and who profits from those images being perpetuated, I'm really skeptical of a lot of the beefs that I see um, because what we're really dealing with is um, people desperately seeking to feel important in the world. And, you know, culturally there's a big difference in the North and in the South. If somebody bumps you, if somebody steps on your shoes. I mean, I lost two uncles to street violence. You know, I'm not allowed to break up fights because two of my uncles got killed on some street foolishness. And so, um, I think more than anything, um, we should take stock and reflect and see if the kind of world that we want to live in is the kind of world that perpetuates and centers um, junior high beefs between grown men. Increasingly, I I'm trying really hard to be present in every moment. Um, it's so easy with these networking tools, with our phones that beep and click and, and desperately seek to um, take us away from where we are. Um, I I've tried to reclaim my attention. And I'm a much healthier and happier person by learning how to be present. Present in my writing, present in my relationships, uh, present with myself. Um, there's a quote that I'm, I'm not going to try to uh, actually quote it verbatim, but it, it was essentially a, a writer who said, a lot of the problems of our society are rooted in the fact that we're not comfortable being in a room alone with ourselves. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I'm imminently Googleable. Uh, my name is Willie, W-I-L-L-I-E, Jackson. Uh, Willie at WillieJackson.com is my email address. Um, I write every day on my blog, WillieJackson.com. Um, I've got a magazine, um, AbernathyMagazine.com. I'm really proud of the work that we're doing. We've published 300 and, let's see, by the time this airs. Uh, we've published hundreds of uh, important articles that I'm so proud to have put in the world. So um, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm not hard to find. Love yourself. Love your parents. Life is not promised, life is precious. Be present, tell your folks you love them, and uh, try really, really hard every day.